Hello everyone, this is Ruthie Renee, Clinical Certified Hypnotherapist, and I'm here today with Kelly Hammond. She is a Master Practitioner of Hypnotherapy, EFT, Neuro Linguistics Programming, and something interesting we'll talk a little bit more about, Timeline Therapy. So, so thankful that you could be here today, Kelly, and um, for just everybody else to know what a roller coaster I put her on. I've changed the time on this interview like three times. So thank you so much for working things out with me. And I'm so excited to talk to somebody who has, has uh, learned techniques from a different teacher than, than me. I've mostly talked to people from the same school. So I'm excited to dive in and learn more about your techniques, what you do. Um, but first, my, my first most curious question I always have is, how did you get interested in this line of work? Because for the rest of the world, it seems a little weird. In fact, this is the reason I do these interviews is to help demystify the weirdness of hypnotherapy because it's not all quacking ducks and and you know the the old wives' tales that people want to say it is. So tell us your story. Well, um, recently I told my story on Facebook, and it was a quite. Uh, very raw story. My life has been an interesting life and it's been, um, I had a single mother and she did the best she could for me raising up. She was a good mother. However, things happen, right? And abuse occurred um, and we became homeless, couch surfing wherever we could. And because of that uh, and other things that happened, that, that caused a lot of anger and sorrow and fear through my life. And it was something that I was always trying to get through, trying to combat, try to, I had no self-confidence. I dealt with depression. I felt like I, I was not good enough for anything or anyone. I carried that through jobs. I carried that through relationships. And I always looked good on the outside, smiling on the outside, but so much, um, confliction inside. And I, I hate to say it, but I would blow up periodically with the ones that I most love. And when I could no longer stuff the anger, or the sorrow or the fear any longer in, it would just come out explosively yelling, screaming, throwing things across the room, thankfully not hitting people, but just throwing things. And and, and I was never in control of my anger. And it, it even led into a, a um, an eating disorder at one point. I became anorexic. I lost over 100 pounds in less than a year. And by not eating anything and over exercising, doing crazy exercising. So I was always looking for something to help me. And so slowly but surely, I found different things. Things. I took a course and became a happiness coach because I, I was like, I want to be happy. You know, who doesn't want to be happy and right. feel peace in their life? So I found some tools, but I knew it wasn't the end of the journey because I still wasn't in control of those emotions. I was working corporate jobs where people would come in and get, you know, ask for suggestions for leadership. And, and, and I'm like, I had no confidence in myself, but I knew that I had to give this advice. And I'm like, okay, this is what I know. And so I'd share it. And so I then realized, okay, there's life coaching. I should probably do life coaching, become certified in that because I think that might help me plus help the people I'm helping right now. So I did that. I'm like, oh, I've got more tools now. I'm feeling better, but still there's that anger, that fear and that sorrow really deep down inside. And at one point I'm in this, corporate job and I'm I knew that it was getting to the end of the job you know how you feel when something's coming to the end as well as there was so much darkness where I was it was adding to the depression and so I had a pity party of one with uh, balloons and you know my own little balloons and everything but I was just really getting down and I said to my husband I can't do anything but train and that's what I was doing was training and he goes yes you can you can do tons of things just go write down you know so I'm, I'm writing things down I can't figure anything else. And I went to him and I jokingly, jokingly said in a very sultry voice, I know what I can do. And I was really looking for a reaction. And boy, did I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I know what I can do. 
you know, those 800 numbers, honey, I can, <laughs> she goes, that's not even funny. That's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm joking. I'm joking. And, and then I said, well, I'm jokingly still, I said, well, I can become a hypno therapist. You know what I mean? <laughs> he goes, well, wait a minute. That's an idea. And I thought he was joking. He did research and actually found a school that I could attend. And the school, I did a lot of research, reading their testimonies, reading, you know, what they did. And one of the things that they said is that you aren't just being educated to help others with this stuff but you yourself will see a change. You will be able to get in, under control of your emotions and so on and so forth. I'm like, hmm, I wonder if that's true. I wonder, and if it is, this might be my answer, finally my answer. And it's interesting, I had already had clients that I was having that were life clients, life coaching clients, because I had those tools where I could help them, but they were coming to this blockade where I was at that blockade and often you know clients you have clients that are working on things either that you've worked on or that you're working on one of the two and it was interesting they were all coming to that point where I kind of was and so I went to these classes hoping beyond hope that this was the answer and I came away with emotions under control. And I saw the world differently. Instead of dark and gloomy and scary, I saw it as opening. I saw it colorful. I saw a light finally at the end of the tunnel. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's just happened to me. What will this do for my clients? And that's when I started using that with my clients and what a difference it made in their lives too. I'm like, oh my gosh. So it's just, it's changed my life for the better. Did that answer your question? Absolutely. I, I, you touched on so many things perfectly. And that's, I think, what so many people get frustrated when they're doing traditional talk therapy or other coaching and you have you have these prob problems what you think are problems that you can solve cognitively you can map it out you can look at what's going on and you can make the changes and that's great and then there are those amygdala hijack issues that you aren't in control of it just comes up and happens that that um uncontrolled anger or fear or panic attacks things like that and when it's when it's subliminal you have to get subliminal to fix it so yeah. what <laughs> what a fun way to discover and find hypnotherapy and i bet you thank your husband all the time who I just found out you guys is also a hypnotherapist. So did he go to the school after he saw the amazing changes that you had? That's a funny story, actually. <laughs> <laughs> when we did this was a time, it was 2020, actually. Uh -huh. And it was at the beginning, we were in Nevada, and it was in March that the training was going to occur. I had taken off some days for continuing education with my job, which I was okay with that. And I got to the airport and the flights kept on canceling, canceling, canceling and getting longer, longer, longer. And I called my husband and I said, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get down there. Or I don't know if I'm going to be able to get back up. What do I do? And he called the school and said, are you sure you're going to continue this class? And they said, nothing has ever made us stop any class before. And they've been doing their classes since the 1980s or even late 80s. And so they've been doing it for a very long time. Nothing have they canceled it for. Like, okay, cool. And so I went down on the plane that was really late compared to what time they said it would be. And my husband was talking with them and he decided to come down with me and take the classes too. And so both of it was at the last minute he decided, but I'm glad he did too, because he went through a lot of transformations also. And it's made me uh, a lot 
easier to live with. I know for, <laughs> for him, it's made it a lot easier to live with me. And it's been really awesome to see the changes that have occurred with him too, that have opened his world and perspective also. Wow. How amazing to have a live-in buddy practice partner. Exactly. I bet your marriage is just went gone. Oh. Yes, <laughs> it is. It does because periodically, like I've said to people before, it these are tools to use, right? These these are tools, just like if um, every day you brush your teeth. Now I don't know hypnosis every day because I don't need it every day. However, there are times where I need a, a brush up, a little maintenance. You know, when you bring the car in, you get a little maintenance, and yes, I do need certain things. You know, recently I had to actually get rid of some emotions that I didn't realize were there something triggered something was in my life brand new a stressor I'm like what the heck is going on and so I sat down with my husband and we did some timeline therapy and hypnosis and it helped me get out of that uh, that that trap and get back into where I needed to be and so yeah it's been wonderful to be able to share those modalities back and forth with, with each other that is great. You touched on something I want to, um, I'm not sure if I pointed this out to my listeners yet. And that is that if you're not sure what you need help with, because, you know, there, there are those that are like, I am what I am. And it's just, you can't teach a dog new tricks, blah, blah, blah. And then there are those of us that are constantly wanting to improve our lives. We want to have better the, everything in our mind, body, reality. And so one of my big questions to my coach mentor years ago was, it's so easy for me to see in my clients what's going on. How do I find what I need to work on? Your triggers. When you are yep. triggered, that's, that is what you need to work on. Oh man, that's painful. All right, let's take a look. Why, why is it painful? So I'm glad that you've, you've figured that out and you have somebody that you can share and trade with all the time. That's, that's fun. Now, <laughs> this is just my own curiosity in your marriage. Do you find, is there a time and a place? And do you ever have to say, please don't bring your hypnotherapy mind in here? <laughs> like, yes, of course. or, or of is course. it, <laughs> is it just a, um, know when to be quiet and I'm noticing, I see you. And I'm going to give you space and allow you time to work through that. Or do you, did you have a learning curve? I guess that's my question. Do you have a learning curve where you're just like, I can see blah, 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 blah. Well, what it is, is I, I think there, there's a male and a female perspective in life. Mm -hmm. Males often want to come in and rescue us and save us and give us the solutions. Yeah. And females often just want to be heard. And so that's something I've had to discuss with my husband, myself. It's just me. Um, honey, I just need to be heard at this point. I don't need solutions. I don't need hypnosis right now. I just need to be heard. And he's very gracious and he's very um, willing to do that also. Oh, that sounds like you've got a wonderful husband. So, an incredible before, <laughs> because you said, that it started out as just a joke. I could be a hypnotherapist. Now, did you have any misconceptions or things in your mind that were not accurate? Yes, oh yes, all of us do, I think, if we've never been around it before. One of the misconceptions that a lot of people have and that I was concerned about too is that if somebody's in my brain, what are they going to do to my brain? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So first of all, yes, if you're working with any kind of counselor, doctor, hypnosis, anybody like that, you should be able to trust the person to begin with. Okay, so first of all, that's just common sense. But two, if you want to be hypnotized, you will be hypnotized because you actually hypnotize yourself. It's not the individual hypnotizing you. Um, and only hypnotists really understand that, I think. Yes, all hypnosis <laughs> is self-hypnosis. <laughs> yeah, and so that's one thing. Um, and I thought to myself, well, 
I don't want these people to know all my dirty secrets. You know, <laughs> I don't know how many dirty secrets I have, actually have, but you know, I don't want them to know my entire life. I don't want to tell them, you know, da 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 da. Hang my dirty laundry up, and that's another thing too, is that you don't have to. You don't have to, yeah. You don't. And it's not like somebody is opening your brain and taking your brain out and dissecting it. It has nothing to do with it. It has to do with your gatekeepers, your own gatekeepers, your own morals. Um, The other thing, too, is that I I, I knew. So in the movies, they always like, oh, somebody just hypnotized them to go kill somebody or rob a bank. Uh That's a huge misconception, too, because you're unconscious, which you know is in charge when you're in hypnosis and you're unconscious, one of its main directives is to keep your morals, that that's your morals. And so if you are not somebody that's predisposed to go do something such rob a bank or kill somebody in hypnosis, you will not. Yes, you just bounce it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And so those are some of the misconceptions that I had heard and I was concerned about. You know, I'm like, oh, can I be told something under whatever? And, and no, because my morals are intact. I know what I believe and right. I know that I don't do those things and why I wouldn't go to somebody that I would think would want me to do those things anyway. You have to have that trusting relationship, right? <laughs> Yes, that's a very good point. Those are all some of the the concerns I had myself. In fact, the first time I went in, I brought my own laptop and I said, okay, I'm going to record this because I don't trust you. (laughs) And then he very kindly said, well, let's chat for a while because if you don't trust me, it's not going to be very helpful. We need to have that rapport. And but just having, knowing that I was recording it so that I, because I also was a life coach and had many skills. I'm like, okay, if you mess me up, at least I'll know where to go back and reprogram myself. But it's, and then, and it's almost, it's comical. Now we can laugh about it, but I know that somebody's watching this going, yeah, me too. That's why I haven't gone in. So it's the safety factor is, is huge. And what I love about hypnotherapy is that I, I don't have to have any of the answers for you, the client. I'm just the guide to pull up your own answers, your own truth, because the truth is so relative from person to person. So, okay. well, thank you for sharing those. And, and your coolest moment might be working with your husband. I don't know, but what was the biggest shift that you receive personally through hypnosis let's put it this way to realize that i had emotions uh, um different that 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 i had a gamut of emotions that they they were all okay and all correct to have Mm -hmm. uh that all emotions are appropriate as long as they're they're appropriate if that makes sense um (laughs) and and that it was okay to cry. It was okay to to be mad. It was okay to have these emotions that I didn't need to stuff them. I used to stuff all those those emotions. And the first first go around of all this to learn the first the first event where I learned this was I was like all of a sudden somebody said sorrow. I'm like what's that? What is that? I didn't even realize what that was. And they're like, well, when you cry, I'm like, when I cry, that sorrow is when I cry. And I'm like, um, I I don't know. I, I really didn't know because I'd been stuffing those emotions so deep inside and I would do certain things that would stop me actually from having emotions. I would like, during a, a funeral, I would just dig down into my palm so I wouldn't have any emotion. I didn't want that that horrible feeling. And so I just bury myself in the palm. And afterwards, I'm like, oh, oh, that was sorrow that I was actually feeling. That was sorrow. And it's okay to have sorrow. It's okay to be angry if somebody has done something that is angry worthy. Right. It's okay to have these emotions. And that was the 
biggest aha for me, the first biggest aha for me and biggest change too, because now all of a sudden, instead of stuffing it down and not knowing how to express it, I'm like going, oh, that sorrow. You know what, honey? I'm feeling sad. I was able to finally communicate that emotion that I was stuffing. And it was so much more freeing. And I was able to say, I'm angry right now. Can we talk later? Instead of just building the anger, I was able to say, okay, I'm feeling angry right now. And I need to take a break. And I was okay with that. And that's what it gave me is that ability, one, to recognize the emotion and two, to be in control of it better than before. So what I'm hearing is you learned how to utilize the emotions for your benefit and that, that every emotion can be appropriate as long as it's helpful. Yeah. And if it's not helpful, then you have the skills, the tools to change it to another emotion or let it go completely. Yes. That's, yes. Oh, that's, that is, that is such a cool thing. And <laughs> people, people that work with emotions, um, naturally, they grew up with it in their family, discussing feelings and all of that stuff. It's hard for them to understand, but there are still many people that, that have that pressure cooker stuff, 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 stuff. And then it blows. With the anger oh, yes. and rage. I mean, look at yes. our world. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. That's that's great. Um, do you have a favorite client story? Now, uh, just to let you guys know, this lady has clients literally all over the world. You work with people in New Zealand and South America and America. You just have no limits. Well, as long as they speak English, correct? Right. In Canada too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite clients is I've got a couple of fa I, I all my clients become my friends. So I always say, guys, when I start working with them, I say, well, if you didn't know this yet, you're going to be my friend. If you're not my friend yet, um, you're not my client. You're my friend, just so that you know that. Um, <laughs> because you do, you you become friends. And it, it's a professional friendship, however it is a friend. Mm -hmm. And you care for them. And um, But one of my favorite clients that I was working with, they were on... Um, disability because from work because they just couldn't handle what was happening uh physically psychologically emotionally what was happening their boss was having them do illegal things as well as micromanaging them and because of my background in coaching actually coaching in hr positions and training in hr positions i know dol department of labor EOC, equal opportunity, and so on and so forth. And so I said, you know, these are the laws and you can, you know, do X, Y, Z, A, B, C. And the person was too afraid to do that. And um, they're like, oh, I'm afraid to lose my job. They were also afraid that they wouldn't be able to get another job because they weren't good enough. That's what they felt. They weren't good enough. And they were afraid to start a business because they just didn't think that, again, they had enough skills. And so after life coaching, they came to that stop. And then we use the modalities. And it's amazing what happened with this individual. So the individual had to go back to work because the disability ran out. And so um, we were we were in contact, you know, briefly through emails, just checking to make sure because I, I check on my clients after the modalities are done. I just check on with them and say, hey, how are things going? You know, how is life changing? How is things getting better? Do you need another checkup? You know, type of deal, just to make sure that things are running smoothly. And so finally, after about a month, I was able to finally really get in touch and have a face-to-face -to, -face to find out what had happened. So after about, uh, after we had gotten done, about a week later, she had to go back to work because her disability ran out. She went back to work and her boss called her into work, into her office, and she knew immediately that the boss was lying, immediately, as well as she went right away to HR and complained, which she would never have done before. And when she did, HR kept on saying, are you going to sue us? Are you going to sue it? She said, you know, I'm not sure yet, which again, she would never have done before. She wasn't confident enough. And she said, I'm not sure yet. Well, 
she gave the job. She just gave up the job. She said, I'm quitting. They gave her a huge compensation package when she left. Right. Within two weeks of leaving, she got a different job, which was paying her much more than she was paying, getting paid, as well as she now is an executive. Wow. That is an amazing story. The things that can shift with a little bit of clarity and confidence yes. and all of the things that you can do with your subconscious mind shifting. Yes. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Well, oh, oh, before I go to this part, I want to hear about, tell me the, um, the school that you went to. Had James. Had James. And that's in Las Vegas. Close to Las Vegas. Yes. To that area, Nevada. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you said that he came up with his own theory or he's got this timeline therapy. Can you tell us a little bit about how that works? Yes. Uh, timeline therapy is a hypnosis technique um, because the person is under hypnosis, but it's a lighter hypnosis where you're able to communicate with the individual. And what you do is you go, you have them look at their timeline above their timeline. They're traveling above their timeline, seeing events over their timeline. And we work on five different emotions, anger, sorrow together, then fear, guilt, sorry, hurt, and then guilt. Five emotions based on the Gestalt theory is that once you take care of one emotion and the other emotions come down like a pearl necklace that's been cut and the pearls yeah. hit each other. Yeah, exactly. Boop, 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 boop. Like if do dominoes, right? Yeah. So, but anger and sorrow are the ones that are closely related. So that if you take care of anger and you leave the person without taking care of sorrow, you'll be leaving them in a very unhealthy situation. Mm -hmm. So we have them go over their timeline, seeing events, going back as far as they can to find the first event of anger. And what happens is when they find that first event, and it could be during birth, after birth, prior to birth, and I don't judge, uh, I don't judge where they find the anger. It could have been um, genealogically, it could be a past life, it could be during this life, it could be anything. And again, I don't judge because that's not my place. I'm a facilitator, not a judge right. <laughs> or a teacher. I just, yes, exactly, just facilitate. And so they find that first anger and they don't have to relive the event that caused the anger. And a lot of times the anger caused was a trauma of some sort. Now the trauma to you and I could be stubbing your toe. That's not traumatic. <laughs> not a deal. However, to them at that moment was traumatic. And again, I don't judge exactly at that age. And so they go, they find it. And then we pluck it up like a tree root, right? We pluck, take that tree and its root out of the ground. And when you do that, the tree falls and it dies. What happens is once we get that negative emotion out, we fill it in with beautiful, positive learnings. And we disconnect the negative emotion from the event. When we do that, what happens is the event is left there for memory. We don't get rid of that memory because memories teach us something, it teach us how to act or how not to act. And then, but the emotion is no longer tied to it. And therefore, they don't need to keep on having that trigger because a lot of our triggers are caused by that event that we may remember or not remember and the emotion that's connected to the event once that emotion is taken off it dies like the dead tree and often most often what happens is after that one major event most of the other anger has been taken care of for the rest of the life as well into, as into the future and it's it's amazing what happens when we do that that's beautiful. And again, the domino effect going that way. Um, so as you were talking, that's, uh, it's, it's interesting. I, um, with my self hypnosis course, I teach one of them is a timeline version. Mm -hmm. So I was curious to see how it differentiated. One thing I was thinking of as you were talking is some of us have such traumatic events and you think, there wasn't anything beautiful you could put in attached to that event. And I'm just, 
I'm just hearing what other people may be thinking like, well, there was nothing beautiful that could come from being raped. So this is what happens to be able to protect the individual from the event. We, we never, 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 never want somebody to relive an event because that's what's why the purpose it, right? yes you're above it or way back in the movie theater wherever yes. you need to be okay uh, but you you gotta yeah disassociate from it and when somebody has had a traumatic event such as that what happens is if we see them having going into the event experiencing it we bring them back out to a safe place and at the very beginning of working with somebody we find out where their happy place is where they're most peaceful and so that's where we bring them is to their happy place if they're experiencing anything uncomfortable and that's why i do my um sessions over zoom so that i can see a person's expression because i can see what's happening with the person and so if i see that happening we bring them out of there but if they don't see anything beautiful or anything positive what we do and this is one of the most beautiful things i've done with a client and it's not something i was taught it's something that i've learned through experience is that we can bring them to the person that they were that baby that child and we can bring them as the adult who knows now that they were able to survive they were able to so and so forth we bring them to that child and we have them comfort the child and tell the child what's good about the child sometimes we even have them bring that child to their happy place where they can comfort their child and give them all the love and comfort that they needed in that situation. And then we bring them back to where it was and make sure that they show that child the love that they wanted and needed, give them the hug, embrace them, hold them, whatever they need to do. And then again, it's like taking the root of the tree out and it falls and it's so beautiful what happens in the very end too we make sure that they understand that they were that child and the child was them and that the two of them are the same individual and it's just so beautiful that is beautiful so you're able to integrate the i find that that's often what happens is when we have traumatic events we don't like what happened and so we shut that piece of ourselves out and it wasn't the fault of the child or, or the baby or the teenager, even if you cognitively knew this is wrong, right. but there's always a reason you do the things you do and then you bring in the forgiveness and bring it back. And it's, it's such a beautiful process. I like how you're, you're talking about all of these things that you do to comfort that, that younger version of yourself. And it can seem so silly to somebody who's like, especially the manly man all toughen up and blah, blah, blah. And it may seem silly to your adult version, but what we need to remember is that you're not dealing with an adult version. You're dealing with a two-year-old, a baby who needs that nurture and you allow, give the, the permission to receive all of those beautiful things. So even, so I guess what I'm hearing is even in a traumatic event where everything seems ugly, you can still implement beauty, not to the circumstance, but to the individual. Well, yes, okay. absolutely, okay. yes. That and sense. I come from a Christian point of view also, and often my, uh, clients are Christian, but they don't have to be. I've worked with atheists before, which is, <laughs> I have non-judgmental towards anybody, what they believe or don't believe. But often um, certain of my clients have actually had, um, they've had their God next to them comforting that child, or they've actually seen their savior next to them, comforting them. And, and they feel the, the, um, the hug and the love that's been given to them, which is really nice to be able to help them through that process that they need to be able to heal. That, that is beautiful. And I, uh, that touches on something you said earlier, um, with like past lives or, or whatever comes up, how, and you, we don't judge. But one thing that I found is that some people get stuck because cognitively they think, oh, I don't believe in reincarnation. I don't believe in all of these things. 
but really it's your mind finding a way to show you in the most unthreatening way. And so if you need to believe that you were on some planet as a mermaid and had this experience, it's okay. You roll with it. You tell the story because it's the story. It's the emotions that's in the story that come up to teach you the lessons we need to learn. And I think that's kind of goes the same thing with faith, whatever, whether it's bringing your ancestors in or an alien or Jesus Christ or Buddha or whoever feels in your mind, the best person or figure to give that child comfort then hooray <laughs> yeah it works yes yeah the the unconscious too as you know is simple symbolism symbolic mm -hmm. loves to use symbolism right. and is the place of imagination also and so whatever that looks like to them is what it looks like to them and that's why I don't judge I I know certain people of different religions and I know what they believe and I tell them in the very beginning when I start working with them I I understand what you believe and whatever you believe or don't believe I don't judge you I don't judge anything you believe or don't believe because whatever it is if it's against what you normally would believe that's not for me to judge so whatever you say stays here. It's like a closed door. It stays between you and I, and, and that's all. But yeah. It doesn't matter. Yes, and giving giving them permission to explore their mind. What What's there? Let's just see. Who knows? That's, yep. that's beautiful. Well, Kelly, I know that there are so many people that are fascinated and want to learn more and want to find you. Where is the best place that people can find you to do work with you? My Facebook page. My Facebook page is Kelly Marie Hammond, and it's K E L L Y Marie M A R I E Hammond H A M O N. Perfect. And I'll go ahead and put that link under in the show notes, and so people can easily just click and find you and um, put out a friend request and and see if they can connect with you. That's Thank well, you. Thank yeah. you again for everything you've shared. Just such enriched conversation alone uh what would what if there was just one thing that you could share with the world to bring more wisdom and peace and whatever it is what what would that one thing be never give up never give up yeah because then it's all a journey and learning and all the worst moments can change if you just never give up but that's, that's you there's there's always an answer there's always an answer. If you're searching, you'll find it. You know, you knock on the door, it'll be answered eventually. Sometimes it'll come in, in, con, in con, unconventional, unconventional ways or from people you never thought of or books you never thought of, but it will come. Just don't give up. Just keep on asking the question and you'll get the solution. Perfect. That's, that's absolutely perfect. And that's so, so true. What you look for, you'll find. So if you're looking for all the ways there's sadness and anger and, and hate and everything else in the world, you're going to find it. And if you also look for opportunities for healing and growth and love, and you're going to find it, right? Absolutely. And looking for the thing that you want rather than the thing you don't want. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, it took me way too many years to figure that one out. <laughs> I, there's the other thing too, is that my husband and I have an app now and it's where we actually offer courses with, um, coaching with the two together with coaching and with the course so that people can take more advantage on learning things that we normally would do one-on-one. -on -one. Now we have the course and then we do the coaching where we do the modalities separate from the co coaching or the learning which is really cool because that it we've picked our brains on all these topics and during coaching sometimes you just don't have time yes. to get all that stuff out but in the class we have it all in there and then after we we do four sessions with them with the coaching with the anger sorrow hurt and guilt then we do the coaching after they've gone through the classes so that they've got all that rich understanding of what the unconscious does and how they can do certain activities, assignments, because there's assignments that always go with things to be able to work on self-confidence, stress, imposter syndrome, and so on and so forth. That's, well, that's perfect. And um, 
So go ahead and send me a link to, to be able to get that app and I'll put, plug that in here as well. And that's perfect. Sometimes, so I, I have a couple courses as well. And sometimes people think, well, that, that's just more money. But if you want to get the work done, understanding that learning from your course first is going to save so much time during the coaching or hypnotherapy or NLP or whatever modality you use, it just gets, it goes, I know that my clients that I've already worked with or been in my group, they go from taking an hour to an hour and a half in a session to clearing things up in 15 minutes. And then you can go on and find another one and find another one, or you can cut it short and have less expense. So that's great that you guys have that. And now I'm going to have to do a little bit of exploration and meet your husband as well. So, well, thank you so much for, for being with us today and sharing your wisdom and your expertise. And I'm so glad you're here making the world a better place. Thank you, Ricey, for giving me the opportunity to be with you today. Wonderful. Thank you.